So, one of my friends who often plays Minecraft wanted to know how to make this work. Well, it's pretty simple. The key element is you have dripstone spikes, which you have to either buy from a merchant who's like wandering trader, or harvest them from a dripstone cavern biome. Uh, apparently there is a dripstone cavern biome somewhere in that area up in the top right. I haven't actually found it yet. Oh, I mean, OGGM got there a different way than I did, so I, I'm not entirely sure exactly what path he uh, went through the mountains, but it's somewhere in those snow-covered mountains area. That's a rather large area, though, so I'm really not sure. But anyways... That is a place that I could go to and harvest dripstone spikes. The ones that I'm using I bought from a merchant because every time I see a merchant I check to see if the merchant has something I want. Every time. And I keep a stack of emeralds on hand just for that purpose because merchants can have a stupidly large array of things. Also, at some point, uh, I, I stopped caring about eggs. Oh, no chicken. Oh, well. Yeah, that's how you turn eggs into baby chickens. You don't incubate them. You throw them, and sometimes they uh, explode into an... Chickens can apparently reproduce some other way, too, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, though, so we do not currently have any merchants here, but as soon as it's morning, maybe we will. Hmm. Uh, that house. That's uh, probably. I actually put signs in the houses to indicate who was sleeping in them so that I could, you know, find them if needed be after hours. This is surprisingly dark, considering how close it is to several torches. Oh uh, well. Apparently you can actually get things up nearly to daytime brightness, but you have to like cover the ground in torches. That's clean practical. Anyways, why am I using this house? Because since this is the farthest house from the um, bell, uh, it's the one that the uh, villagers like the least. I know, weird reason, but it is what it is. Anyways, back to, to uh, making stuff out of dripstone. The list of materials is actually extremely short in terms of things you genuinely need and must have. Obviously, the dripstone spike is a critical component that you cannot do this without. That thing, right there. Cauldron, also, critical component that you cannot do this without. You can make cauldrons, though. You can. It's like seven iron ingots, I think. And the other thing, of course, is the liquid lava. You may have noticed that this house is mostly cobblestone. Like this area here, I uh, ripped off the uh, uh, wood roof that it came with and ripped off the wood walls that it came with. And, okay, this isn't the only house I did that to, but 
I, I took that apart so that I could uh, put lava inside here. These are actually terracotta blocks that I, I think I actually found the terracotta blocks inside the cr uh, crafting house that I was sleeping in a, few, a minute ago because that's, for whatever reason, the stone cutting tool is used as the uh, crafting block for villagers to be brick masons. Okay, the, 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 the bricklayer villagers also do stonework, but they work with terracotta more than actually stone. Whatever. Anyways. So, terracotta does not burn when exposed to lava. There's lava inside here. Do I feel like uh, showing it to you? Yeah, I guess I could do that. Oh, wait, that's the axe. See? Lava. Ooh. So warm. <laughs> Anyways, so, have that here. Uh, the specific materials you need to contain the lava are anything that can contain lava. I mean, honestly, you don't have a specific need for anything there. Why did I build the train track going over the roof of the building? Because golems. The train will stop if you run into a golem. And for some reason, this area here always has golems in it. Like, non-stop golems. Also, I think you can actually get into uh, these cauldrons. So I put these here to prevent villagers from accidentally jumping into a, a cauldron full of lava and getting burned. I haven't personally tested whether that's actually a thing that's a real problem, but, you know, better say something sorry or something. Anyway, though, but, yeah, it's a really short list of things. The, the real trick here, though, is the amount of time it actually takes for this to form. I'll do a quick demo. Need a bucket. Don't have a bucket. Well... I need a bucket and something to cook. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? That's an interesting point. I hadn't thought of that. A way to keep villagers out of something. Plant sweetberry bushes around it. Nope, not that one. This way. Because the sweet berries are something the villagers see as an obstacle. Okay, we can't use that, but... Oh, well, we only have five copper in there. That's empty. Oh, that one's full of coal. Okay, so... Step one. Collect lava. Actually, hold on. Well, for this test, I, I, I don't want to uh, use the reserve lava. Yes, like, this village has the blacksmith uh, table variant that comes with two blocks of lava. Which are actually the ones that I use to make th uh, this thing up here. It, it'll respawn eventually. I am going to take that off the active item because accidentally dropping lava is bad. Oh, one of the most amusing things uh, uh, in the game, though, is actually that railroad tracks contain lava. Lava cannot flow over a railroad track. It's weird. Okay, so this one's empty. Put this in, put this in. Notice how the bucket immediately empties and I get to... Uh, put it back in my box.
Now this, you know, my, my reserve lava is, you know, there. One thing that I think would, would be, they, they do all sorts of like weird, like fake realism things, but one thing that they didn't do is having mossy cobblestone have the moss burn off of it because it's uh, too close to lava and turn into regular cobblestone. Oh well. It certainly didn't need to be added, but uh, feels like something that they could have added if they really wanted to. Now, what is the lava level up here? Realistically, it actually takes a while for um, lava to fill a cauldron. Like, you know, I don't know, like, I actually have never timed it, so I'm not sure the exact rate. But you can look in the, in the uh, cauldron just to see the, the lava level. If it's like that, well, I mean, wait longer. Ooh, you know what? Here's something I could do while I'm waiting. He, he, he. I need to go get the tool. Didn't get the tool. In case you're wondering why I decided to make a ramp here. For some reason, villagers were climbing this hillside anyways. Oh yeah, so many colors of wool. Why? Because I have sheep in all of those colors. Yeah, I haven't actually been dyeing wool. I've just been dyeing sheep and harvesting wool from the dyed sheep. I don't even have all of the colors of sheep you can have in th this game. And this is just stock Minecraft sheep. It, it, it's not even uh, the ones with uh, modded stuff. All right. So, I actually sorted my sheep by color. Like this is black and white only. Why? Yeah, reasons. Oh wait, that's right. This was the original sheep pen. Those three sheep in, that are currently in there are just leftovers that I uh, hadn't relocated somewhere else. See, this pen is other what is mostly, if not solely, white sheep. Why? Because most colors of sheep, well, okay, a lot of colors of sheep, not necessarily the majority of them, but a large percentage of them, if bred with a white sheep will produce something other than a white sheep. The ones that don't are the ones that are already uh, variant colors created by breeding something with a white sheep. This one, these are actual black sheep and brown sheep. Why did I put them together? Well, they're easy to tell apart, and crucially, when you breed them with each other, you get either black or brown, not some hybrid. Here, we have the dark gray sheep, the light gray sheep, and a few yellow sheep. Now, why did I put these all in one bin and away from the others. Well, see, the actual logic there is that I don't, I, certain colors of wool are things you can sell to merchants. These aren't, or at least not the, the merchants that I have in my game that buy wool, buy yellow, light gray, or dark gray wool. No. Damn it. I hate it when this happens. Attempting to close the gate and having a sheep just Oh, 
body block you uh, via uh, improper collision detection. Oh, wait. Well, not necessarily improper collision detection, but, you know, collision detection uh, causing you to shear the sheep instead of uh, hitting the gate. Honestly, though, anytime the, the, the sheep is in, a, in position for that, it'll happen anyways. Get back in the pen. Okay, enough of that. Anyway, so let's see how uh, high the level is. See, this is actually one of the safest places you can be because I put this uh, perimeter of torches. So enemies have to spawn outside the torch perimeter. And also, unless it's a creeper, the enemy has to uh, bypass the golems to get to you. So, in that time, actually this isn't showing us anything here. Maybe it's a binary state. I'm not entirely sure. It might be that you just have to wait a long time within it. So, uh, switches from empty to full. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this area doesn't have torches. Oh yeah, I thought I heard a spider. That's a spider. When are the golems going to kill it? Oh, that's a zombie. Mm. Oh, well, there's string where the golem did kill a spider. Well, that zombie's dead. Okay, well, I'm going to take a nap and then come back for loot. Yeah, this area over here isn't one of the brightest loot areas. Hmm. Maybe I should do something about that. Anyway, though. Yeah, that was a demonstration of the whole lava thing. So it does take a significant amount of time in game for it to refill. Also, you have to be relatively close to it. If you're outside of a certain distance, it stops uh, processing stuff. Like, you know, it's like. Uh, for example. I am approximately here. If I was to go north to the village that's up here, nothing like crops or anything like that would actually grow while I was here. At all. Actually, simply going over to here is far enough to stop things from processing like that. And, you know, it's like there's another village over here. One up here somewhere, I think. I don't know exactly where it is because I didn't bring a map sheet for that area. I still haven't made a map sheet for that area. This is not a village. This is just me building a house and marking its location on the map. Red Desert, though. Ooh, stuff. That's just a random uh, waypoint shack I built. Waypoint shack on Mushroom Island. It's a island. I actually did build a shack on the north end, but I didn't put one of the map marker things in it. Ah, uh, well. Anyways. Yeah. I'm still not entirely sure what this colored thing here is. Hmm. Maybe it's just saying that... Oh, yeah. I bet it's just saying that I haven't explored that area fully. Okay. That would actually make sense. Certain areas in the middle of the ice flow, I just never felt like entering. Because, quite frankly, they're boring. That actually might be one of the taller parts. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's enough rambling. This was about how to make lava. Honestly, part of the reason why I'm stalling is so I'm going to go check it. Oh yeah, did a trader show up? I don't see one. Although for this village, sometimes they spawn over there on the sandbar. Mm, let's go over here and look.
in case you're wondering why there's a torch here, because otherwise enemies couldn't hide in the shadow of the giant tree. Hmm, don't see any traitors over here. Uh oh. Note, traitors, unlike the undead, do not need to uh, be in darkness to spawn. They can actually spawn in what well, light in areas. Hmm. Actually, one of the places I've had them spawn is right next to that house I have my stuff in. Yeah, okay, this uh, still hasn't uh, filled up yet, but I guess we just need to wait longer. I'm also not 100% sure if the uh, place where I was sleeping is actually close enough. This is, is a relatively long distance. Relatively. What? A golem died last night? Uh... Okay, what the hell killed my golems? And what killed my dark uh, saplings? Oh, wait. Uh, maybe this, this is a dark oak. Mm, I don't know. This is dark oak. Uh, yeah, that's Dark Oak. Okay. Oh, maybe what it was is I, I, I did a test. Because, like, I've been having these just, like, stay here. And just seemingly not do anything at all. Uh, I think what it was... Because, uh, like, if I remember, I actually tried uh, putting bone meal on it. And it just, like, refused to do anything. I think I may have um, rearranged the Dark Oak saplings so that they were planted in a cluster to see what would happen okay still though uh multiple golems died last night or is it or or is it just that i haven't been paying enough attention and, and golems have been dying uh regularly all along because now that i think about it i saw less golems here than i was expecting Anyway, though, all right. I was going to check the uh, lava thing, and then call it, and then end the video because yeah, I don't feel like doing random tasks until the booth. yeah. Okay, I don't see any level, so I guess I just have to wait even longer. Alrighty then, and this is um, over twenty minutes already, so yeah. Uh, it does take a significant amount of time in game. That is unquestionable. <laughs> Stupid human tricks. If I land on the bell, I won't take full damage. But yeah. Wow, seven iron ingots from dead golems. That is unfortunate for the golems. Yeah, I used a lot of iron making railroad tracks. A lot less railroad tracks than I actually need. I would completely run out of iron and not even get halfway to where I want to put at the railroad because I would genuinely like to put a railroad going all the way to the North Village. Except, yeah, that's way too far. I don't have anywhere close to enough iron. Like, the total distance is, like, 1,800. I think I'm actually going to uh, make a um, uh, bobsled trail for part of it, because one of the things you can do is boating on top of an ice sheet is actually faster than boating in water. Because Minecraft logic. So, if it's a solid ice sheet, you can actually just put down two rails to uh, guide your path and then just uh, boat across the um, 
surface of the ice. Works great. The catch is, of course, you can't have holes in the ice. And you need the rails to avoid going off course. Because while boating on ice, you are functionally incapable of steering. So the rails, if done right, will keep you on course. Anyways, that's enough for now. Oh, yeah. How much of this is on? Okay. It finished cooking all of the stone and hasn't finished burning down yet. I'm honestly not 100% sure. Maybe the, the, the issue with the lava thing is I just not, wasn't close enough to it all, all of the time. I'm really... Not entirely sure that all parts of this village are inside the active whatever area. Oh. Well, see you guys later.